lots of scrap in the cabinet shop. Today we're going to do something about that on Woodworking with Wes. We're going to make some breadboards. Some of the woods we're going to be using out of our pile. We have some uh, Peruvian black walnut, quarter sawn white oak, maple. This is Caribbean rosewood, alder, uh, more maple, American black walnut, purple heart, and some yellow heart. And we're going to glue that up into a bat pattern and make some beautiful breadboards. Some of our cutoffs are already milled to thickness and to width, but some of it is not. So we're going to be milling it to thickness, cutting it to width, and getting it ready to glue up on our breadboards. We're going to be cutting our strips to inch and a half wide because we're going to do an edge grain breadboard and we're going to be standing our pieces on edge. So off to the table saw, the planer, and the jointer. Let's get going. all our wood to thicknesses. In fact, we've done some varying thicknesses so that we have some decorative look to the panels or the breadboards as we glue together. We've also cut everything to inch and a half strips and we've laid them out the way we can get a very nice color match or, or color variation for each of our boards. The next step is to glue up. We're going to be using Tight Bond 3 in our glue up. We're going to clamp up and leave them overnight. We're using Tight Bond 3 because it gives a little extra time for us to get all our glue spread. And as you can see, with all these pieces, if we were using a fast drying Tight Bond 2, and you want to use a, a waterproof glue in your glue ups, Tight Bond 3 and Tight Bond 2 are both waterproof glues. So you want to use a waterproof glue because, of course, it's a breadboard. And, uh, but the Tight Bond 3 allows us a little more setup time to get our glue ups done and get ready to go. And with all these pieces, we need a little more time. Okay, we'll just continue our glue up here. 
get plenty of glue on there so that when we put our clamps on and clamp up we want to have some nice squeeze out to make sure that all the voids are filled with glue and you want to clamp it up good and tight but you don't want to clamp it up so tight that you squeeze all your glue out that's not the idea behind it either but a good squeeze out to show that you've got all the glue that you need and we're going to glue up two at a time so there's one now we'll do the other one at the good squeeze out we're getting. We've got the right amount of glue. We're getting good squeeze out on all our joints. Okay, we'll let the rest of them done. Let them sit overnight. Four hours since we clamped up our breadboards with the Type, 3, uh, type Bond 3. We're going to take the clamps off now, run them through the planer and the wide belt sander, get ready to size them and finish up.
we've just run all of the boards through the planer and the sander. Now we had a wide belt sander to our disposal, so we used it. If you don't have a wide belt sander, you can, after you plane it, sand it all down by hand. A little extra work. Or if you have a shop in your area that will allow you to rent a wide belt sander by the hour, I've done that in the past, go over and have your stuff sanded, especially if you're doing a batch and you have quite a bit to do. Costs you a lot less money to spend a few dollars to have some wide belting done than it does to spend the time sanding. We're going to now cut these to size. Now I did want to point out one thing. You'll notice that as I glue up, I always leave a couple of long pieces in my glue up. I do that for a specific reason. As you run that through the planer, you typically get a little snipe at the end of your planing, and a snipe is just basically a, a bump in the planing. But if you put an extra long piece, the snipe takes place beyond your board. And so that eliminates, if you're, especially if you're sanding by hand, that eliminates the need to really sand out the snipe mark clear across. When you trim your board, you trim off that snipe mark, and you've saved yourself a lot of work. So as you glue up breadboards, always glue in a couple of long ones. Saves you some sanding later on. We sized our boards to 11 and 3 quarters by 21 and put a 30 degree back bevel on them for a finger lip. Now for the fun part, sanding.
We've completed all of our sanding except for the final sand. We wiped our boards down with a damp cloth to raise the grain. Now we'll do the final sand 180. We, did, we started with 80 grit. We went 80, 120, 150. Then we put our, uh, we wiped it down with a moist cloth to raise the grain. Now we're going to do 180. Then we're ready for oil. The oil that I'm going to use is just mineral oil. We're going to oil these boards up and then we're done. These are going to be beautiful. Oh, those breadboards are beautiful. This is a great way to use your scrap lumber, turn it into cash. We're going to use ours as client gifts for the kitchens that I build. What a wonderful gift from woodworking with Wes. Mm -hmm.